The Texas Parks and Wildlife Television Series is supported in part by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, conserving the wild things and wild places of Texas thanks to members across the state. Additional funding is provided by Toyota. Your local Toyota dealers are proud to support outdoor recreation and conservation in Texas. Toyota, let's go places. Coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. My sisters and I knew what the family priorities were. God, the family, and the land. They are protected from the elements because they're underneath an overhang. You can have nesting colonies that can be in the thousands. We're not dumping garbage in the lake. We're actually providing habitat for these fish. Texas Parks and Wildlife a television series for all outdoors. Over six million acres of grassland once blanketed the Texas coast. Today, less than 1% remains. For 200 years, one family has protected some of the last pristine prairie left in Texas. I think we are passionately connected to this land. We feel the history, we feel the tradition. From the time we were little girls, my sisters and I knew what the family priorities were, God, the family, and the land. In 1834, 15 year old Thomas O'Connor emigrated from Ireland to find his fortune in the New World. He steadily acquired land that's remained in the family ever since. Everybody in our family does something to contribute to managing this land. Where I grew up on the ranch. I spent a lot of weekends out here with my, my dad, riding horses, and just being involved in everything that daily activities that go on out here. Park now oversees the ranch's cattle operation, using rotational grazing to preserve the grasses. The main goal is, and something I've heard my whole entire life, is that uh, you know, the next generation, we want to leave this ranch better than we found it. The family has done extensive brush control, battling the aggressive Wisach that can choke out the grasslands. Kind of the last of the prairie, and when it's gone, there won't be any more, and all the wildlife associated with the prairies will be gone also. The ranch is giving one endangered prairie bird a fighting chance. That water prairie chickens were reestablished here back in 2007. <laughs> When we've released over a thousand captive red birds here. On the edge of extinction, the prairie chickens' survival depends on these open grasslands, home to one of nature's most elaborate courtship rituals. When the males are booming, they do a little dance. The sacks blow up, they make a, a distinctive sound. It's quite a show. It's, it's good to have these big open expanses that are going to produce a diversity of grasses, a diversity of, of plants, and then also to maintain a diversity of animals and insects. It's, it's home to me. All of our family history is tied up in this land. I'm hoping that it will stay in our family and that they will be able to continue to use this land for ranching and for preservation of the wildlife.
One of the best places to see cliff swallows is close to water and where there are bridges. During nesting season, you'll see these large swarms. They can nest alone, but cliff swallows definitely like to nest together, and you can have nesting colonies that can be in the thousands. Cliff swallows like to nest in a little mud house. They use mud and create a cup. Before there were bridges, cliff swallows nested on cliffs and still do. They are protected from the elements because they're underneath an overhang. By building bridges, we essentially recreated those conditions. Many of our bridges have really nice overhangs, and these are conveniently located close to creeks or rivers. They fly around catching insects as they fly. There's not a lot of swallows in the wintertime because you don't have a lot of insects in the air. Around cities and any kind of development, oftentimes you are removing habitat. But because of bridges, you have many more places that cliff swallows can nest. They're amazing flyers and they're beautiful to watch. Wish you could spend more time with nature? Well, every month you can have the great outdoors delivered to you. Since 1942, Texas Parks and Wildlife Magazine has been the outdoor magazine of Texas. Every issue is packed with outstanding photography and writing about the wild things and wild places of this great state. And now, Texas's best outdoor magazine is available as an app. It's just that easy. Texas Parks and Wildlife Magazine, your connection to the great outdoors. Since we were soldiers, unfortunately, we had to get into battles from time to time. And when you did engage with one of the African-American units, it was said that we fought just as brave, fierce, and strong as the mighty Buffalo. So your Buffalo soldier was your first professional African-American soldier in the U.S. Army, and this is after the Civil War. That name was bestowed upon the African-American men in the Army from the Native Americans, for several different reasons, uh, most common one being the hair on top of their head reminded the Indian of the hair in between the horns on the buffalo. And you can see I got a little bit of curlies going on today. Lewis has been with the program for about 14 years and his job is to host outreach events statewide. So he has a team of two and they travel the state to connect new audiences to Buffalo Soldiers history and our Texas state parks. The history of the Buffalo Soldiers is important because it tells a story that's often not told in schools. And this is one thing that's really awesome about Lewis is he is such a phenomenal storyteller that he can make sure that you find a way to connect with that history. You realize that history is also part of your history. Our story is connected with everybody's story. There's not one person walking this earth who did it on their own. That's the key ingredient, if you will, for how we preserve history, which is the story of people, and getting that interest to other people who are not necessarily of our same background. This, this one actually surprises a lot of people. Lewis has such an institutional knowledge, and from there has grown into a very competent living history interpreter, as well as a supervisor and coordinator of our Buffalo Soldier program. You won't see a better storyteller, but when you watch him tell a story, you see those kids' eyes light up, and you know that they've, they're forever changed, and that they're gonna grow up and hopefully share that story with their kids. My passion really grew and matured here as I became more comfortable with the outdoors and then being able to teach my kids, wanting them to be exposed and comfortable with the outdoors um, just naturally led to me growing a passion for teaching other youth around the state the same principles. The work that he does in the community is so vital to the success of Texas State Parks and just making sure that our community feels welcome and engaged in the outdoors. A lot of times we're the unsung heroes that are out in the trenches, in the nitty gritty, suffering through thunderstorms and lightning, 
and rain and we're out there with those people and making a difference and trying to, to bring all these stories and everything to life and make sure everybody's having fun at the same time. That team travels thousands of miles every year. They're in very high demand from schools, community groups, and of course our state parks. It is difficult at times for three people to serve the entire state. So under Lewis's leadership, my hope for the Buffalo Soldier Program is growth and even a greater impact to Texas State Parks. Lewis's work is very important. It's important to him, it's important to our team, it's important to our state uh, because Lewis's work leaves that lasting legacy that will keep audiences coming back forever and ever. The more we share the story, the more we preserve the story and share it with the others, the longer it'll last and the more impactful it'll become. If we can inspire the, the younger generations to get outside, embrace the outdoors, and, and connect to their natural heritage, then we've successfully done our job. On a spring afternoon, Cody Corin and Calvin Lamont are out to do some fishing. What color are you name? Watermelon red. Let me switch up here a second. Serious anglers like Calvin and Cody work every angle to hook a nice fish. I got one. You ain't very big. Nope, came off. Otherwise, they might not hear the end of it. Oh, you didn't even get him in a boat, huh? We fish together quite a bit. Come on to daddy. Oh, you little flipper. That's part of fishing with Cody. Oh, man, it's a monster. Pretty normal for us to rib each other. Little dude. That's huge. <laughs> but these veterans know the key to a respectable fishing trip is finding the right location. I think when you go hit them once, see what they got to offer. That group that's on that point over there. We'll go to this one for now. And they happen to know some promising new spots to fish because of a project they helped with more than a year earlier. <laughs> Watch your head. To the uninitiated, that project might not have looked like anything that would improve fishing. It's got enough tentacles hanging out. Somebody that doesn't really know would think that we're just piecing recycled garbage together. We're really not. So there's going to be 24 arms for each bait. We need three more. We're not dumping garbage in the lake. We're actually providing good habitat for these fish. We are at Lake Cypress Springs to construct some artificial fish habitat structures. Well, there's not a lot of structure for fish like largemouth bass or sunfish to relate to underneath the water. And fish need habitat structure in general. Even in reservoirs that left timber standing, over time that timber in the water breaks down and the habitat for fish declines. So we're at a point where we really need to start doing something with these reservoirs to improve fish habitat. That looks good. We've done work with Christmas trees in the past, but the PVC that we're using in these structures that we're building today are gonna to last for many, many years. I think these attractors will start working pretty much right away. As soon as the algae can start growing on them, it, it, they're gonna start attracting fish. We're out. And really make that angling experience that much better. Today, the materials have been purchased with money from the Conservation License Plate Program. We're partnering with the Franklin County Water District here. We've got a couple members of a new Bass Unlimited chapter here to volunteer and help make fishing better in Lake Cypress Springs. Yeah. We love fishing tournaments, but we both understand that without conservation of the lakes, we're not going to be able to do that. So it's on our part to make sure that we help take care of that, take care of the resource that provides our, our recreation. Of course, artificial structures are just one way to help fish. Check out this little buddy right here. This is flat stem spike rush, water star grass, wild celery, white water lily, square stem spike rush. Native aquatic plants provide natural habitat. The more different species that we've got in that plant community, the more stable that plant community is. The man behind the old timey mustache is Rick Ott. People tell me I look like Wild Bill Hickok. And if it makes people smile, I'm all for it. 
weeding my garden. Rick manages a native aquatic plant nursery at the Texas Freshwater Fishery Center in Athens. And it's not just the structure, it's also the actual food that's being produced here. Structural habitat's very important because the fish uh, use it as a place to hide, but the vegetation is producing food that invertebrates consume, small fish consume the invertebrates, bigger fish eat the smaller fish, and then we eat the bigger fish. That same basis to the food chain is occurring on those plastic structures as we have with the plants. We're just growing a little teeny tiny garden on the surface of that plastic. Here we've just got a bigger garden with a bigger type plant. But getting that big garden started is the tough part. Let's go look at those pond weed cages. On the water, Rick and his crew check on past efforts. We're at Purtis Creek State Park. We're coming back to evaluate some of the native aquatic plant plantings that we've done years ago. We would prefer that it was full of plants. They find some failure and some success. I'm, I'm liking this a little bit better. While cages can protect the plants from being eaten, they cannot protect against drought or high muddy water. We just don't have optimal conditions for plant growth right now. With the water being so turbid, there's not as much sunlight getting to the bottom. The crew can only hope conditions will improve and replant. It's, it's kind of comfortable in the summer. Got it there? Yep. My mom used to tell me not to get all wet and muddy, but now I can. Synchronized swimming, uh, definitely. We had our Esther Williams can going underwater and putting those plants in a little deeper water than we typically plant. Ken is our deep water guy. A lot of times all we see of Ken is the bottoms of his feet. But we know he's working if we can see the bottoms of his feet. If we get a little bit of luck involving the kind of weather conditions that we have this summer, we should see good survival of the plants that we've put in today. Nearby Lake Athens demonstrates what these desirable plants can look like when well established. We've got a, a very diverse native plant community here. We've got extensive coverage of a number of species. So ultimately, this is what we're trying to produce. We're getting more and more of these Friends of Reservoirs groups all over the state, allowing us to fund these projects in a number of different places. It's the key to having a great fishery, you know. After their work day is done, the crew's intern, Tyreek Landry. There's one on there. Shows what native plants can do for fishing. That's a good fish, guys. You see what it produces. Beautiful fish. Go ahead and turn this guy back. It made my day. Whether with native plants or strange looking artificial structures, improving fish habitat makes for a better day fishing. Here we go, there they are, Sam. Back on Lake Cypress Springs, Cody and Calvin find some fish at home. Near habitats they helped install. Got it. Everybody likes the home to stay in. If you've got extra places that you can fish that you know is holding fish, that's always advantageous when you're fishing. If you start catching fish, that's always a bonus. There's a good fish. Glad you finally caught one. <laughs> some inside information improves the odds in the fisherman's favor. And these secret spots are really no secret. Most anglers probably don't know. They can go on the Texas Parks and Wildlife website and get those grid coordinates for the habitats that we've placed. You could do the same thing with a cell phone. Absolutely. You can punch those grids in and it'll take you right to it as long as you got cell phone service. Get the net. Get the net. Oh, we ain't got one. <laughs> Look out. There's enough habitats in here that the fish are going to be on one of them. No, it is a crappie. It's a white perch. Hey. So these habitats are, are holding crappie. Caught some crappie and caught quite a few largemouth today. Great day of the water. It was a good time. Visiting Texas State Parks just got easier. With our new online reservation features, you can choose a specific cabin, campsite, or shelter and reserve it for your next visit. The new reservation system makes it easier to plan group getaways. Save the day and don't get turned away with our optional day use reservation. Good morning. And be sure to get in. Thank you. Plus, you can buy park passes and gift cards online. Yeah. Texas State Parks.
getting better for you. This is an overwhelming experience when you come out here for the first time. You just really feel as if you're on the edge of the earth. There's no other place like it in Texas. I'm a, the fitness writer for the Austin American Statesman. I'm working on a story for my column about uh, what it's like to mountain bike in Big Bend Ranch State Park. Ready to go? Ready to go. Let's go. Do it. I'm a little nervous, <laughs> I guess. It's jagged and rough and just seems wild west to me. But it's beautiful, too. The whole route, we're doing 108 miles over four days and camping out at night. Big Bend Ranch State Park is the biggest state park that we have in the state of Texas. It's 310,000 acres and about 388 miles of road, trail, route. We have a lot of trails. <laughs> big Bend Ranch State Park is a very big place and there is a whole lot of opportunities. Yeehaw! Sweet guys, look at the view of that Chisos in front of you. It is challenging in places, it's smooth in places. This is awesome. What I love about Big Ben Ranch is it has a little bit of everything. <laughs> oh, look at that, you got it. <laughs> about a mile and a half left. Getting out on a mountain bike just lets you cover more ground. It's about all there is to do out here. If you don't like the outdoor stuff, you might as well go back to the city. on a mountain bike, you don't have to go but 100 yards and you can probably find something that's pretty technical. Some of those spots on our main road are kind of challenging. There's parts where I walk and, you know, I hike my bike and it's okay to do that. Whoa! Oh! You okay? I think so. I'm gonna do it again. Okay, good idea. We survived our first day on the trail. It was very challenging. Can I get a toe from here? Now I feel pleasantly pooped out and I'm gonna sleep well tonight, I know. Ooh, it was yeah. awesome. <laughs> oh yeah. A lot of people would think it would be crazy to come bike in the desert, but it's very magical to me. Check out the view. I think in the next three to five years, this will be the mountain biking mecca of Texas, if not the southwestern United States. It's very, very beautiful. Prickly stuff and tarantulas everywhere. <laughs> this is kind of like what I pictured Texas to be when I was a little kid. Another day in paradise. It's just nice to see that there's still wide open spaces.
This series is supported in part by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, conserving the wild things and wild places of Texas thanks to members across the state. Additional funding is provided by Toyota. Your local Toyota dealers are proud to support outdoor recreation and conservation in Texas. Toyota, let's go places.